Hey, welcome to today's chemistry class. This is Texel Academy. I want to teach you chemistry. My name is Tobias. And so today we'll be learning chemical reaction. Okay, uh, permit me to write my reaction this way. Reaction and stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. Uh, in, if you're in secondary school, you will discover this one of the most one of the important topics because of the fact that it has many calculations under it. So today I would like to give you a, a tutorial on this. Okay, what is, but before we go, I would like to define what chemistry is. Okay, I believe some of us might really need this introduction. So let me start from the definition of chemistry. Chemistry is the study of the structure, study of the composition, study of the properties of matter, and then the reactions that change this matter into no substances. So, in a chemical reaction, we discover that a certain matter undergoes chemical changes and changes to another matter. So, I believe you are following so far that a chemical reaction. Now, I mentioned chemical properties. Chemical property refers to the characteristics that distinguishes matter from its initial form okay, and the final form. That means there is an initial form now and there is a final form of matter. So, what are uh, Example, what is the initial form of matter? In the initial form, we consider reactants. Okay, the form of matter before it undergoes a reaction refers to the reactant that will have as reactant. Then, when matter undergoes a chemical reaction, we discover that chemical changes, chemical changes are witnessed. So, after the within the chemical reaction, the products are formed. So, what are products? Products are matter in its final form after the reaction. That's what we know as the product. So, as I wrote here, you can see reactants, chemical reactions to products. So, our reactants are either elements or compounds. So, I believe by now you know what elements are and you know what compounds are. Examples of elements nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. So for those are elements for compounds you have sodium chloride, H2SO4, that's the close of a six acid and the rest of them. Those are elements, those are compounds now. Now um, when elements undergo chemical reactions, they will give rise to products which are compounds. So two or more elements can react together to form new compounds. And then the compound can also react together to give rise to other new compounds. So it can either be one compound. Or two, or thereabout. For example, in the composition reaction, a certain compound breaks down to form many other products which are compounds. So I believe you followed thus far. I'm going to wipe this one for now, so I can give you a. Um, I can write on another one a little heavy. So um, if I've mentioned, we mentioned reactants, product, chemical reactions. Now that makes up chemical. Equations. I think every one of us must have seen this. We have chemical equations. So a chemical equations, a chemical equation has formulas and symbols. Okay, it's how it, 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 it's just using formulas and symbols to represent the chemical changes, the chemical reaction. That's what chemical equations are all about. For example, in the combustion of methane or the reaction of methane with oxygen, we discover that methane, which is CH4, reacts with oxygen to give rise to carbon, four oxide and water. So we'll try to see that this equation is balanced. So that's it. Two hydrogen, four hydrogen atoms, five hydrogen atoms, four oxygen atoms, four oxygen atoms, carbon, carbon. So why is it necessary to balance your chemical equation? It's necessary because um, the balanced chemical equation gives you the relationship between the reactant and then the product that's the benefit of a balanced chemical equation if the chemical equation is not balanced and you try to solve stoichiometric calculations you'll discover that you will not arrive at the right answer a balanced chemical equation helps you to see the relationship as i said earlier between the reactant and the product so if you have noted this point that means you are getting ready to really understand how to solve um, chemical equations on that stoichiometry. 
Now, that being said, I'd like to quote this from Gabbard. It says, a balanced equation of a chemical reaction tells us the relationship of the amount of reactants to one another and to the products. The relationship between the amount of reactants and products and is known as the stoichiometry of the reaction. So now, you know what stoichiometry of reaction is. It is the relationship between the reactants and the products. So if we are considering stoichiometry, uh, you must also consider mole ratio. Yes, I just said stoichiometry of reaction as stoichiometry of reaction. You must consider mole ratio. Now, what's the mole ratio? For example, in this, CH4 plus 2O2 giving you CO2 plus 2H2O. You will discover that the ratio of methane to oxygen here is 1 is to 2. I don't know if you, if you can see this clearly. You will understand what I'm saying. The ratio of the methane to the oxygen molecule is 1 is to 2. The ratio of the carbon dioxide to the hydrogen and to the water molecule is 1 is to 2. So the more ratio helps you to see the, the relationship between the existing compound or reactant in the reaction. So that is your more ratio. So more ratio, the more ratio in which reactants combine and products are formed gives the stoichiometry of the reaction. Note that earlier on I said that the relationship between the amount of reactants and products is known as the stoichiometry of the reaction. So the more ratio in which the reactants combine and products are formed gives the stoichiometry of the reaction. Now, if you consider this equation, you discover that each of these compounds here, or okay, this molecule here, they have numerical coefficients. For example, methane here, the numerical coefficient is 1. And the oxygen molecule, the co numerical coefficient is 2. Carbon dioxide is 1. Then, water, it's 2. Why is the numerical coefficient important? Numerical coefficient of, of a balanced chemical equation represent the number of moles of reactants or products in that equation. So that's why it's balanced. So when we'll be performing our calculation, you will see uh, me making use of numerical coefficients. Okay, um, I wipe the board. I want to introduce you to this. Now in stoichiometry, there are quantities that are needed that are involved. So you can't um, get any, any equation or any equation rather on stoichiometry without um, seeing these quantities being mentioned now one of them is this one of the quantities to be mentioned is mass mass now the symbol of mass is m small letter m and then the unit is kilogram or grams that's for the mass and another quantity we often find is the molar mass now the molar mass is represented with capital m then it's in gram per mole you can write it this way g per mole or g mole raised to power minus one that's mole inverse i believe you understand this another quantity that is considered in stoichiometry is molar volume molar volume molar volume represented as v m and the unit for molar volume is dm cube per mole so i told you just as in this, you can write G per mole or G mole inverse, that's molar volume. Another quantity you discover and you make use of in stoichiometry is amount. Amount, the symbol for amount is M, the unit is mole. So I would like to mention here that is that we call it amount in moles or number of moles. So in my calculations, you're going to see me use amount or I'm also using the like I said the number of moles just know that I'm talking about moles the symbol is small letter n and then the unit is moles another thing with quantity that is important here is molar concentration that's concentration com dot molar concentration is I'll give you the formula later so the symbol for molar concentration is C and that's mole per dm cube so told you can write it this way mole per dm cube that's the symbol for molar concentration and then let me also um write put this one down that's the avogadro's 
non-verbal, verbal is constant. Represented as L. The, it doesn't have a unit. Actually, it's a constant, it's a number. So the number is the 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. So if I'm considering elements, we, we can put atoms here. But then if I'm considering compounds, we can then use more that's for molecules. So that's enough. Having noted this down, if you can just pause the video at this point and take note of these quantities, mass, symbol, n, kilogram or gram, molar mass, symbol, capital N, unit is gram per mole, molar volume is Vn, unit is dmq per mole, amount is n, the unit is mole, molar concentration C, the unit is mole per dmq, then the Avogadro's number, it's a constant, Avogadro's number of constant, the symbol is L, and this is the number. So I believe that you paused the video and you took note of that. So now, before also you go to solve um, stoichiometry, that's stoichiometric calculation problems, you have to also ask yourself, uh, in what forms or what, how is the question going to be like? What's the expectation? What, okay, which question or what questions do you consider? Under stoichiometry. Now, one of the questions you consider under stoichiometry is questions relating to determination of the masses in moles of reactants required for a reaction. Two is choosing the amount of reactants necessary to give a desired amount in moles of product. Now, three is calculation of a concentration of a solution. Four, determination of a present composition as a check for purity. And then five, identification of the empirical molecular formula, empirical and molecular formula of an unknown product. So your equations will always come within these five areas. So if you are looking for an area of concentration uh, or stoichiometry and this thing, just know that you have to consider these five areas. Let me mention them again. I'll start from the end to the first one. The last one, identification of an empirical formula and empirical and molecular formula of an unknown product determination of the present composition as a check for purity that is the purity of substance okay. calculation of the concentration of a product choosing the amount of reactant necessary to give a desired amount of product and then determination of the mole of the amount of the masses as the most of reactants required for a reaction those are the five areas you consider under stoichiometry now let me give you facts about mole this is very necessary now Facts and writing a facts about mole. One of the things you have to know about mole is that the molar volume of every gas, as the molar volume of every gas at standard temperature and pressure, is equal to 22.4 dm cubed. So let me write it down. The molar volume of any gas at a standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 dm cubed so you can also say that one mole of any gas at stp is equal to 22 or equivalent to 22.4 dm cubed you should note that that's a, an important fact about mole another thing is this that one mole of one mole of any substance one mole of it okay contains 6.0 Two two times ten raised to power twenty three atoms or molecules. One mole of any substance contains six point zero two two times ten raised to power twenty three atoms or molecules. That's an important fact about mole. Now let me go ahead to give you relationship between those quantities I listed earlier. If you have been following, you know when I listed, I gave a table of quantities, symbol and units, and they are. Okay, there's a relationship between almost all those quantities. So I'll, I'll go straight now to give you the relationship. Now, one of them, one of them is this. Take note of them because you'll be needing them to solve your your calculations or your equations on that documentary. One of them is this: that amount, or let's say number of moles is equal to 
reacting mass reacting mass of substance all over the molar mass the molar mass of that substance so take note of this amount is equal to reactive mass over molar mass another one you have to take note of is this that amount permit me now to use amount just going so if you have followed so far whenever you see amount you know talking about talking about moles or you can still choose to use number of moles both are accepted another one is that amount of number of moles is equal to number of atoms number of atoms number of atoms all over Avogadro's constant that's Avogadro's constant so what's the value for Avogadro's constant so I said L is 6.022 times 10 raised power 23 so if you want to get let's say you were given an equation get the um, amount of the number of moles so so and so and you're giving the number of atoms you can just do it this way the number of atoms given to you all over the Avogadro's constant to give you the amount in moles required now another relationship between these things that the number of moles let me let me clean the board as you follow another is this that number of moles number of moles is equal to hope as I will keep on repeating this I can choose to use number of moles I can also choose to use amount both are the same thing and if you are considering a gas the amount of number of moles is equal to volume of gas that's volume of the given gas all over molar volume now at this point you have to recall that I said earlier on that volume of the, that molar volume is equal to what 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure I mentioned that before so at this point you can just write down this expression and then go straight to say that the volume of the gas all over 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure that's if it was not given to you in the equation now you cannot another relationship between those quantities is this that's molar concentration molar comp or you can also we, we still write it as molarity say molarity is equal to amount all over volume in dmq some other textbooks will i hope by now you have taken note of this so let me write it boldly In some textbooks, they'll just write it this way molar concentration is equal to number of moles, number of moles all over volume in dm cube. Now, take note of this. This is very necessary. It's going to help you in working with volumes. Uh, that one dm cube. 1 dm cube is equal to 1 liter and then 1 liter is equal to is equal to 1000 cm cube so in case in some questions you are giving the volume in cm cube you can use this to convert it from cm cube to dm cube and also note that 1 dm cube 1 dm cube is equal to 1 liter so let's say if you are given the volume in liters you don't need any conversion you use it straight if you are given the volume in milliliters for example milliliters know that milli is times 10 raised power minus 3 so once you put this and then the particular number given to you is already converted to liters you can work with it it is the same thing as dmq one dmq is equal to one liters which is equal to 1000 cmq now this is very important you have to take note of it as we saw now lastly we can also another relationship I hope you've taken note of this. Another relationship is mass concentration. Mass concentration. Mass concentration is uh, amount in, in grams. Now, remember here I can say number of moles or amount in moles all over 
equilibrium in Bm cube. That's mass concentration, molar concentration. Now, if you taking note of all this, I believe you are ready to go into solving questions. You've taken note of all those formulas and some of those definitions I gave. You are ready to solve questions. And please, I want to remind you now of the area of concentration I gave earlier. I mentioned determination of masses as a mode of reactants required for a reaction or choosing the amount of reactants necessary to give a desired amount of product or you can be asked to calculate the concentration of a solution either the mass concentration or the molar concentration or determination of a present composition as a check for purity that's also part of it or identification of the empirical and molecular formula of an unknown product so at this point, we are going to pick some examples and solve. And I will say that uh, some of the examples I will solve now uh, has more to do with the number one and number two in that area of concentration. So let's go straight to solving questions.